Hi, it's Jonathan, and welcome to this week's Charity Digital Top 3. I hope you're all keeping well. And we'll start off this week by talking about charity shops. Obviously, you'll all know that shops reopened last week, and that means that charity shops got to open as well. So that's good news. It's a chance for charities to earn more income again. But of course, there are some particular issues with charity shops because uh, they do tend to be a little bit smaller than your average shop. So that means if you're going to keep your customers socially distanced, you can only let in a few in at a time, and that means a much less footfall. Secondly, quite a few of them are staffed by volunteers who are often a bit older, um, certainly a kind of a demographic that is a lot more vulnerable to COVID-19. So some of them are obviously understandably nervous about going back to work in shops and, and don't want to do so. So all of this gives some particular challenges to charities. Uh, and one of the things that we'd like to do, therefore, is encourage charities also to look at online shops. Now, some of the big ones have been running these for quite some time uh, and doing it through tools like uh, eBay and Amazon marketplaces, which can get up and running relatively quickly. But it hasn't maybe stretched that far down in terms of uh, some of the um, not the very large organisations, you know, so even the, the charities that are maybe uh, in the millions of pounds rather than the tens and hundreds. Many of them haven't actually set them up yet. So we ran an article on this last week, um, looking at how charities could actually set them up. Uh, it's definitely something to be worth considering. As I say, the technology is pretty straightforward. You do need to think a bit about process. So, you know, uh, which items you're actually going to list on your site, how you're going to manage the rapid fulfillment, so where they sit from a stock perspective, how you're sending them back, and how you're going to handle returns. But of course, many, many micro businesses actually run entirely online, you know, from people's kitchen or dining room tables, and they do this really well. So I think there's definitely an opportunity for charities here. Second thing I wanted to talk about was something we've been touching on quite a bit over the last few weeks and we're super excited about and that's our Be More Digital Leadership Day which is coming up this Thursday. Um, so I've talked about the program before so we've got great speakers from likes of Scout, Citizens Advice, Turn to Us and British Red Cross and we've got some wonderful sponsors Twilio, Olive, Michael and Scurio. But one of the items I haven't talked about and I know it's something that charity attendees really really like is networking and of course a lot of virtual events don't provide an opportunity for this. So we've been thinking about how can we do this? You know, and we're expecting hundreds and hundreds of attendees of this, but we still want to provide that networking experience. So we've, we've come up with an approach. I'm not going to tell you much about it now, but we're super excited about it. If you want to take part and join in some virtual networking and sign up for our event, it's free, as I've said before, and join us on Thursday. It's going to be a lot of fun. The third thing I wanted to talk about is an event we're running with Microsoft and Reason Digital. Uh, it's called a Radical Accessibility Virtual Event, and it's on Thursday, 9th of July. Uh, so this is a very interactive day focused on helping charities to design services which are more inclusive, uh, particularly focused around how those services can meet the needs of people who may be blind, deaf, or have other disabilities, which limit the way in which they can use technology. So as I say, it's going to be very interactive. That means there's only a very limited number of places. So we've got 50 places here. It's targeted at medium charities. So in our terms, that means charities between 100,000 and 1 million pounds revenue. If you're interested, sign up fast because there aren't many places left, as I said. Finally, I want to talk about my work from home tip for this week. And that's about always having a plan B or a backup approach. So my network, my connectivity with Zoom and Teams has been working great for months and months and months, uh, really since lockdown started until last week when it started to misbehave. So there were lots of cutting out, delays. It's been an absolute nightmare. I've no clue why. The speed tests look okay. Uh, the network provider, so the broadband provider, doesn't see any fault, but there's something going on, maybe contention in my network, maybe my router's faulty. So what do you need? You need a plan B when this happens. So a really, really great plan B that's simple to implement is always to share the phone numbers uh, for Zoom and Teams because there are phone numbers you can dial in and get a voice channel going really well. And I've actually been running them in parallel to them having the, the broadband based pictures. And that way I get constant sound. Uh, also, it can be a bit expensive, but maybe once in a while, if you really, really need it, you can just use mobile data. Uh, I did this once last week. It was super reliable work to treat. So make sure when you're setting up those meetings, you're sharing the, uh, the broader dial-in details and always have a plan B that you can fall back on.
So that's all from this week. Just want to quickly call out the flower of the week. It's lavender. Beautiful scene here. And of course, really fragrant as well. Anyway, hope you all have a great week and look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thanks. Bye.